Hey guys, this is Everett from the future. Um, today, in this video, we're going to be working on the GTR205X connector, as well as some other things. You're gonna see me use a quick termination method for all of my audio splices. But uh, I actually realized later, and you'll see this in a future video probably, but I actually unnecessarily shielded these connectors. So the GTR205X can actually act as an audio panel as well as a comm unit. And sometimes the guide isn't exactly clear about the distinctions and the wiring between the two. So I had to go back and reread many, many times. Uh, and when you're wiring a GTR205X as an audio panel, you terminate your audio connections, the shield for it, at the GTR205X side. But when it's acting as a comm unit, you only want to terminate the shields at the audio panel side. So you're gonna see me do a couple of things here that may or may not apply to your installation. If you are using the GTR205X as a comm unit like me, then you're only going to ground those shield drains at the audio panel side of things. And you want to make the other ones what's called a floating shield, where essentially you just heat shrink the shield so it doesn't get grounded to anything other than the side that terminates at. That's how Garmin likes to do it. And when you do it like that, you prevent ground loops, which is essentially when ground has multiple paths that it can travel. And you can think of ground loops something like instead of electricity flowing directly into a pipe, imagine it swirling down a drain and generating a bunch of electromagnetic interference along the way, which is not good. There's also some other reasons um, that have to do with, you know, ground potential and all that fun stuff, but I could spend probably hours talking about EM and ground loops, so let's just get to it. I'll speak if I need to, but we're just going to zoom through the many, many hours of making all these connections. Yeah, you're really not supposed to use a lighter for heat shrink tubing, but uh, you really do appreciate being able to work on an experimental aircraft when you forgot both of your heat guns in the hangar and forgot to bring them home.
yeah, we're gonna just completely ignore whatever I was saying in this video. Uh, because I did all of that fancy, you know, putting all the silicone tape on there, but I actually ended up needing to take this connector completely apart. So I did a lot of this work. Not for nothing per se, because a lot of those wires I did end up just removing the pins and reusing in a different connector or even the same connector. But yeah, don't make the same mistake I did and do not close up any of your connectors until you're done with pretty much all of them because you never know what you might end up needing to interconnect between the two and you don't want to have to waste tape and, and other stuff. So I'm also going to show you guys just uh, a little bit of preliminary work that I've been doing to actually take apart the panel. You know, I'm a couple weeks in the future right now, so I've actually gone ahead and taken this entire panel apart and pretty much torn out about half of the wires in the entire plane uh, because I started to take it apart and I wasn't happy with, with some of the stuff that I saw and I wanted to sort of get it completely organized. Um, so we're just going to start taking off that panel on the right in this video and um, some of the future ones I'll take off all of the other ones and start organizing stuff but yeah let's just uh, get to it I guess. Here is the panel, at least the right one that's been taken off, and we're just going to call it a day for now. So definitely stay tuned, there's going to be a lot more wiring videos soon, and I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. See you around.